Hey there biology, it's time to start uh, our plant study again. And so we are now looking at types of plants and we're gonna start with seedless plants today. But not before we do some review. <clears throat> so pause the video if you need to. I'd like you to review these two questions. You can go back to your notes if you need to to fill these in. Um, but have your one note out please because we're going to be going through the 22.2 notes which you'll find there and turn in later. But you'll see we're reviewing what plants need like carbon dioxide as well as some of the terms we studied sporophyte gametophyte and then if you remember we studied the plant life cycle which we also call the alternation of generations because plants use it to go from one generation to the next okay so our plan today is to look at specific types of plants that don't need seeds to reproduce. And if you remember from last time, we said that. We actually got to talk about that just a little bit, that there are spe special plants out there that use spores instead. And we'll see some of those life cycles today. As a warm up, let's do, just do some matching here. Okay, the first plant that I have here that doesn't use seeds is one found in water. Um, and this is green algae. Okay. Oop. Hey, there we go. Green algae. Um, we'll talk about that more in a minute. Next one. Hey, okay. might have guessed what this is too. It's not completely in water, but requires a lot of water. This is the moss. Oop. More picture of moss. There it is. All right. And then our final one that you probably guessed this is the fern. And if you look in your backyard, you might find ferns. My backyard has them. Might check those out tomorrow. Okay. But the question really that we're studying today is how do these plants reproduce without seeds? So let's spend some time looking at each of them. Starting with green algae. Now you've seen a lot of different pictures of algae here. So what's going on there? Are they all algae? What, uh, what's the structure supposed to look like? Well, the reason why you're seeing several different examples of algae that's green is because green algae has a very broad definition. <clears throat> so let's look at some of those that describe it. Uh, green algae is a plant that's in water with complex cells and uses photosynthesis. <clears throat> so that's the full algae definition. So when you're looking at a plant under water that uses photosynthesis, which is really mostly all of them, then you're talking about algae. And green algae is the one that uses a lot of chlorophyll. <laughs> now, characteristics of algae plants then. Well, we've already talked about a couple. It definitely requires water to live in. So you're going to find that these plants are not on land. Um, they're going to absorb nutrients in the water to grow. Now that is something unique to algae plants. Most plants, we say, use roots to absorb nutrients, but algae can just absorb it from the water surrounding them. Now, this can be a problem, though, if you have tons of nutrients available in the water. So if you have an influx of different nutrients, let's say from fertilizer from farmland nearby, then you can have what's called an algal bloom. And when algal blooms happen, eh, something like this could occur, um, where you have so much algae that it's causing other organisms to struggle in the environment. No bueno. Okay, <clears throat> last thing about green algae that we want to talk about, those couple things we've mentioned, is the unique lifestyle or life cycle that they use. Okay? They don't require seeds, but also one other thing unique about green algae is that their life cycle can actually go in two different directions. Here's the mature cell of the algae. From here, depending on its environment, it can go through asexual reproduction. If we remember we said that's mitosis, where they copy themselves, or sexual reproduction, which is meiosis and requires male and female sex cells. Right? Now I said the environment determines what goes on here. So what's really going to happen? Well, if the environment is nice, perfect temperature, perfect conditions, well, then you're going to go through asexual reproduction. It's faster, 
it's clean, it doesn't require a lot of elements, so asexual reproduction is the way to go. However, if the temperature is not so good or conditions are rough, then algae is going to take advantage of the zygote because when it makes male and female gametes that fuse together, right, it's going to form a nice protective zygote that can keep it safe from bad temperatures or its environment. And from there, you're going to grow new organisms with an arrangement of different uh, genetics, if you remember that from my meiosis. And so there you have the two main st steps, the life cycle. And if you look closely at the diploid and haploid cells, there's really only one little part that we call diploid or sporophyte. And the rest is haploid, all of this, which means that algae uh, live most of their lives with half their information. It's just that mature section right here that still has that diploid going. So uh, you can answer this question in your notes and pause if you need to. How is the environment part of the green algae life cycle? <clears throat> but I'd like to talk about mosses today too. So mosses, not a water plant, but require some water in order to reproduce. If you're picking out the moss, in this picture there's tons of it some here some over here you've got plenty over there plenty over there all right even some growing on the tree right here some moss growing on the tree okay so you've got mosses everywhere mosses are part of a bigger kingdom of plants called bryophytes okay? and bryophytes all have similar characteristics so let's talk about them okay why are bryophytes so small forgot to mention that Okay. Bryophytes like moss, they're so small because they don't have what other plants use to be tough and strong in their cells so that they can grow on top of each other and continue to climb and height. Um, they're missing a specific characteristic which we'll talk about tomorrow. Okay. So they just don't have the same complex cells. All right, on to the structure of mosses. Um, what can we look at? <coughs> has a description of a moss. Now this picture on the right here has the structure. So let's point out a few things. First of all, uh, mosses are very waxy like. They almost look like a wax carpet when you find them in nature. Um, they've got a really shiny feel to them uh, when you touch them. Waxy coating to protect them from uh, bad weather. And then <coughs> they also have hiding underneath the ground a strong root system called rhizoid. And there you can see that picture as well, the rhizoid. Um, they also have a reproductive capsule. So this little part up here. Inside that capsule, you're going to find tons of spores. And spores are going to be important for reproduction in a minute. But that's the main description of the moss. Okay? Here is a, a real life picture of them close up so you can see what they look like while they're growing. Okay, so let's look at some characteristics of mosses. First of all, they live in damp areas because water will be important for reproduction. They can't grow tall. We mentioned that before. They're just missing the part of the cell that's going to allow other plants to be tough and grow tall. And then they have what's called a paired life cycle, okay? meaning that there are really two different types of plants that form to make mosses which we'll look at next. Okay, so this diagram right here has a few different parts to it to show the life cycle of a moss. So here's the full mature structure here on the left. Okay, so here we are at maturity. Okay, but we said <coughs> that inside this capsule right here are little spores. Okay, and when it's time to reproduce, those spores leave and go out and grow into these type of plants. Okay, these smaller plants, these stem-like leaf structures. And these leaf structures, structures could either be male or female. And this is important because what a moss will do next to reproduce is the male part that grew from a spore is going to grow sperm. Okay? And the female is going to produce the egg right here. And 
with some water. We're going to have those sperm make their way across to the female egg to grow into a mature moss again. So closer look at that again. This is the plant um, that grows from the spore. Okay. And from there we have water that's used to travel across to the female egg. Okay. Um, you can spot that um, those uh, sperm actually in a microscope and <clears throat> they have these tiny little tails on them like this that are actually used to help move the sperm through the water okay they're called flagella and the flagella looks like this highly complex super amazing part of nature right here okay this runs just like a motor an organic motor that propels them through the water incredible piece of nature with so many unique parts to it it's difficult to really understand how intricate that is unless we look at the design that was created for them by god um, so these little propellers help the sperm get from one place to the next all right i'm going to give you some other videos you can check out um, to see the life cycle of moss um, i'll give you a better idea of how that works to help you study and to complete your notes your final notes question is an application of what we've studied. So we want you to look at this carefully. It says, while collecting specimen for a science experiment, a friend collects a greenish plant near a water source. They're not quite sure if it's green algae or moss. Write a detailed guide below to help your friend understand how you can tell them apart. We've spent time talking about descriptions, characteristics of these two plants. And so I think you're well equipped to help your friend out in that. So I'm looking forward to reading through that when you turn in your notes. All right, uh, follow the rest of the directions on Teams and you should be good to go. We will see you next time.